Karen Butterflies. It's my pleasure to introduce to you today our butterfly expert. This is Drake White of the Nectar Bar and she is, you've seen her already at the Butterfly, the Monarch Butterfly and Pollinators Festival in San Antonio and you're going to see her on our site flying all over yes. because she is our expert and we are in her beautiful backyard and she's going to give us a little bitty tour and then we'll have a second part of the series where we go in and talk a little bit more about butterflies. So Drake, thank you so much for thank being with us Thank you for having today. me. I appreciate it. Yes, I'm, I'm very happy to have you here and, you. and be a part of this, definitely. Yeah. Um, you want to tell us a little so, bit about your new pergola? Yes, so here is um, a pergola that was actually built by Clean Cut LLC. Um, they actually did a wonderful outside the box thinking um, with realizing what I do and ended up giving me butterflies that are actually on the ends. Um, so once I saw that and I was excited, I was so happy because of course me, everything butterflies. Um, but the reason why I wanted this here was because this is kind of my outdoor classroom. So this is going to be the area where uh, the kids are going to collect and we'll kind of go over the things that are, are they're going through at the garden and taking notes and uh, also do, going over curriculum that we'll be having with the homeschool as well. That's the fall that starts all year round? Or it um, it's going to be in spring and fall and some summer sessions as well. Um, and it's just kind of an ongoing thing and as classes start to come and we kind of also get them in other places too. Um, and 90% of them are homeschool that come through. So and through here we have different types of um, nectar plants and host plants, but over here, this is mainly our wildflower patch. And in here we have a mixture in, of an eclectic type of uh, uh, gardening style. And so this is kind of where I just don't really do anything. I let nature take its course, um, but it's a great teaching tool because we have a lot of natives in here. Um, some of our native milkweed like Texana, um, we have some green milkweed, um, and this here is a really good fall um, and late summer uh, plant, which is a musk flower, scarlet musk flower. Um, so there are a lot of different things in here that are both um, nectar sources and most uh, uh, plants. The reason why that the things that we want to teach here is we want to get them familiar with different types of plants, the difference between a host plant and a nectar plant. So the nectar plant is for the adult butterfly to eat and the host plant is for the caterpillars to actually eat. So you have to have both. Without one, you're not gonna have the other. So you have to have them both. Should you come on this way? This is our wonderful, wonderful little butterfly house. And it's a butterfly house slash grow house. So this side here is where we actually do the uh, life cycle and, and grow um, different plants that might need to be needed for shade and then on the other side is our um, is more of like a, a greenhouse where we grow the rest of our plants. So if you want to come on in, let me show you. So through here we have different setups um, of rearing cages and we have some pipe vine swallowtails in here right now. These are pipe vine swallowtail caterpillars. I will set it right here so you don't have to hold it. Yeah. There we go. So these little guys here, I believe these are pipe vine swallowtails. These also, until they get a little bit bigger and I can see their markings, mm -hmm. um, they could also be polydomus swallowtails, which are a rare stray for us, but we do have them 
here and the ones that we've gotten in this t this season um, I do believe came in on the Harvey's wins oh. um, so the last time I had them here was probably about four or five years ago so they're a rare stray for us we do get them but I think in such the abundance we had them this year was definitely brought in from from Harvey, from Harvey. Mm -hmm. and so how old are these these are probably the second instar as tiny as they are they mm -hmm. actually will get about maybe three inches long mm -hmm. and fatter around than my thumb wow yeah hmm. yep and from this since we're a little bit cooler now um it'll take longer to go in through their life cycle so from mm -hmm. here in about two weeks they'll go into their chrysalis and then another two weeks or so after that um they would come out or if it stays cooler they'll just overwinter and mm -hmm. then they'll come out in spring in the spring okay and how how do they what do they look like when they're butterflies and so if these are um the pipe vine swallowtails then if you've seen the ones that look all black and then the really bright shimmery blue bottom wings mm -hmm. those are the male pipe vine females are all black if these were the polydomus they're all black and then down the wings of the on the side of the both the um upper and lower part of the wings they'll have yellow oh okay and sometimes if people don't know how to tell the difference between butterflies, they might mistakenly think that it's a giant swallowtail, but the difference would be from wing to wing across, then that yellow band would be across, not on the side of the wing. I see. So lots of different ways to be able to tell the difference between different species of butterflies. Of butterflies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so over here we have some milkweed, um, and we have a caterpillar here, and this is a queen. Um, so a lot of people are unfamiliar when you say queen, they automatically think queen like a, like, like a for bee. a bee queen mm -hmm. or in, this is actually a species. So there's male and female, both with, within this butterfly. Um, it's, it's its own it's actual like species. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so we have some queens here and this is tropical milkweed, which there's a lot of controversy around tropical milkweed. It's not native. You shouldn't use it. It's it causes the butterflies, the monarchs, to come out of their sexual diapause, and, and that's just not true. Um, it is not a native, but if you actually plant this in October, like around now, mm -hmm. um, around I always say usually around um, Halloween. Oh, mm. That's okay. <laughs> um, I usually say like around Halloween is when you want to actually trim it back. Um, you trim it back to the ground and then keep it trimmed back until about the end of January so then it can grow back. The reason why we do that is because there is a spore called OE um, and it is contaminated throughout the whole year and the heaviest being around now. So if there's contamination on it then you're actually feeding that spore to the caterpillars which then turn out and give um, dead caterpillars or very sick caterpillars or that grow into be adults and it just keeps the whole cycle going. So if you keep it cut back and then allow it to grow again in spring, you have fresh and pure milkweed.